So we're going to look at an aspect of probability where we've got to work out the probability of typically two things happening at the same time, if you like. And so we need to start by working out what are all the possible outcomes, what are all the possible results. So we can do this simply by listing them if there's a small number of them. But typically, a two-way table, which we'll demonstrate in a minute, is a much more efficient way to go about it. OK, once we've got those um, possibilities, then we can work out what our probability is going to be by working out the probability of what it is we want to find by finding out how many ways that can happen and then dividing it by all the total possibilities that we've worked out. So let's look at this in practice. So here we've got two bags that have got counters in them. The first bag, this bag here, has the counters with numbers 1, 2 and 3 on them. And bag 2 over here has counters with 1, 2 and 4 written on them. OK, so we're asked to work out the probability of getting certain scores down here. And we get the scores by adding the numbers together on the counters. OK, so what we need to work out is what all the possibilities are. So this is where we this two way table comes into it. So it's two ways because we've got one bag this way and one bag that way. So if we pull out a 1 from bag 1 and also a 1 from bag 2, that would add up to 2. So that's why we've got 2 here. 2 and 1 is 3. 3 and 1 is 4. 1 and 2 is 3. So we're just adding up the ones that cross. 2 and 2 is 4. 3 and 2 is 5. 1 and 4 is 5. 2 and 4 is 6, 3 and 4 is 7. So that's all the possible combinations of picking one from this bag and one from that bag and adding them together. These are the possibilities. So you can see, if you look in the table, that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that means 9 is going to be the bottom of our probability fraction. Now, what they ask us for here is to find the probability of scoring a four. So now we're going back to the table and looking at how many times, how many ways could we get a score of four. So four is in the table one, two times. So that means the probability of scoring two, um, four is two out of the total of nine different possible scores. Now, the next one asks us, we need to read this carefully, the probability of getting less than five. Less than five, it says. OK, so that means the probability of getting any score that's less than five. It's still going to be out of nine because there's still only nine possible scores. But how many of these numbers are less than nine? So we've got one, two, three, four, five five different ways that the score can be less than five. Now, we don't include the fives because it didn't say less than or equal to. If it did, then we'd include the fives. But it just says less than, so five is not included. Let's look at some more examples. Here's a real classic. This is the throw two six-sided dice. OK. So this time, this is slightly different from normal because normally they just get you to add them up. But this time it's asked that the scores are found by multiplying the numbers on the dice. So we've got to fill this in a bit like a multiplication grid. So it's one times one, two times one, three times one, four times one, five times one, six times one, one times two. 2 times 2, 3 twos, 4 twos, 5 twos, 6 twos. You get the gist, so I'm going to be quiet and just fill the rest of it in. Basically doing your times tables here.
OK, so I filled in the grid. So now we've got the grid filled in. Now what we need to do is answer their question. So the first thing it asks for is find the probability of a score of 12. So before I look for how many 12s there are, let's figure out how many possibilities we've got. So we've got six this way and six that way. So all together in there, there are 36. So the bottom of my fraction is going to be 36. So now let's go and look and see how many 12s are in the table. So I've got one there, two, three, and another one there, four. So notice I deliberately didn't put this on the line because I had an inkling that this fraction could be simplified, which it can. So 4 over 36 is the same as 1 over 9. So if we divide top and bottom by 4. The next thing they ask us for is a probability of a score of 10 or more. So this means 10 is included in what we do. It's still going to be out of 36. So any number that's 10 or above. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I'm just going to double check that by counting in a different way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So it's definitely 19. 19 over 36 won't simplify. OK. And then finally, it says find the probability of getting an even number. So we're still out of 36. So now we've got to count up all our even numbers here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Now, this can be simplified because these numbers both divide by 9 to leave us with 3 quarters. So couple more examples coming up here. So here this time are two different things are flipping a coin and spinning this spinner, which has got one to four on it. OK, now we need to read this a bit more carefully. So it says if the coin lands on heads, his score is one more than the number on the spinner. OK, so let's do the heads line here. So that means that in here, the score is going to be one more than these numbers. So that's going to be two, three, four and five. Now, if the coin lands on tails, his score is the number on the spinner doubled. So we've got to multiply by two. So one times two is two. Two twos are four. Three twos are six. Four twos are eight. So we've filled our table in. So now we can look at finding the probabilities. So write down the probability that Jordan gets a score of four. So altogether, there are eight possibilities here and only two of them are four. So it's two out of eight, which can be simplified to one out of four, a quarter. Then they ask us for the probability of five or more. So we've got one, two, three ways to get five or more. So that's three out of eight. OK, and finally, it asks us for the probability of getting a prime number. So we need to know what our prime numbers are. So two is a prime number. Three is a prime number. Five is a prime number. But four, six and eight aren't. OK, so we've got one, two, three, four four prime numbers, so four out of eight, and that is the same as a half. OK, so just going to do one where we kind of have to just start from scratch. So here we've got a coin to flip and a dice to roll. OK, so our chart is going to look 
like this. So when it comes to the coin, it's either heads or tails. And when it comes to the dice, it's either one, two, three, four, five, or six. That's our possibilities. So you can do a bit neater job of this if you're doing it in the exam. So we've got that. Now we need to look at the rules. How does the scoring work? So it tells us that if the coin lands on heads, the number on the dice is squared. So that means multiplied by itself. So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, and six squared is 36. Now let's go back. It says if the coin lands on tails, the number on the dice is cubed. So that means 1 times 1 times 1, which is still 1. 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. 5 fives are 25, times 5 is 125. Right, now for the challenging one. So 6 sixes are 36. Then we need to multiply that by 6 again. 6 thirties is 180. 6 sixes is 36. 180 plus 36 gives us 216. OK. Now, it says that each person who plays pays 50 pence to have a go. And if they score above 30, they win and they get a pound. Now, we're told that the game is played 450 times. And they're asking us if he's how much money he's actually raised. So first of all, let's work out the cost. So the cost to the person was 450 times 50 pence so because i want this in pounds i'm going to say 0 0.5 half of a pound so that means that the people paid 225 pounds now off that we're going to need to take off the winnings shall we say so what did they have to pay out in winnings so how are we going to figure that out? So we're told here that they only win if they score above 30. So we need to work out what the probability of that is so that we know what, what we can estimate how many times out of the 450 times people won. So above 30, so 30 doesn't count. So we've got one here, two three four so it's a fraction of four out of 12 there's 12 there okay so that means one third of the time people win so one third of 450 is 150 divide this by three so the amount that they've had to pay out in winnings would have been 150 so then to work out how much money is left over, they'd have to do the 225 that they got and take away the 150. And if you do that, you'll find that there's just 75 pounds left. OK, so there's a one in three chance of them winning. So they don't actually make a huge amount of money. So they either need to make it. Uh, a bigger an amount if they want to raise more when um, that people have to pay to play, which would be difficult without increasing this. Or the other thing to do would be to say that you need to get a, a much bigger score. So um, let's if you really wanted to be a bit mean about the game, I suppose you could say that they had to score um, over 100 to win which would mean that only one in six people would do it. So it would only 
paid out 75 and therefore you would have raised 150 this time. Anyway, that's that's neither here nor there in terms of the actual question itself. But that's how you can use these tables to help you figure out probabilities.